Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another Friday vlog of mine. Another Friday has caught up with us people. Yes, it has. And only has a Friday caught up with us people, but it is a bank holiday weekend here in the UK. April and May just seem to be bombarded with <laughs> bank holidays here in the UK and then we get nothing for ages, but we are rather spoiled, it has to be said. So we have that means to anyone who doesn't know what a bank holiday is around the world. <laughs> I don't know if people have bank holidays in other countries, but it means that we've got Monday off, people. It's not always a Monday a bank holiday, but predominantly it is a Monday. And um, sometimes it can be a Friday, like Good Friday at Easter, for example. But um, yes, a bank holiday on Monday it is. So I have a nice long weekend to enjoy no work on Monday. I realise that many people are still in lockdown and not working anyway, but I am able to work from home. As I've said many times, and I have been doing so today, the only reason I know it's a bank holiday, <laughs> I didn't know it was a bank holiday until halfway through the day today. Well, I say that, it was this morning, it was about 10 or 11, I think, and I sent an email out to a bunch of people at work, including one of the higher ups, and uh, he responded saying, oh, I have a lovely bank holiday weekend, and I was like, oh, it's a bank holiday weekend? What? <laughs> So I would have been working away on Monday, You're completely oblivious people. There is there is no concept of time in this bubble of mine that I'm living in at the minute. <laughs> what, day, what year is it, people? I've no idea what's going on. Uh, so there you are. Um, we have a bunch of stuff to talk about here. Before we get going, people, flagons up to you all. It is, after all, flagons up Friday, people. Uh, this is me just sipping on my first one. And there might actually be a flagons up Sunday, people. Anyway, <laughs> I tend never to do it back to back. <laughs> you know I mean? There's always a day's break for flagons, people. I always like to have a bit of a, a non, you know, if, I, if I'm able to drink more than once in a week, if I'm on holiday, like I was on holiday, in fact, I was like at least a day's break. <laughs> so I can at least get a run in at some point and then, you know. And uh, yeah, so there might be a flagon up Sunday. You never know. You might get a second vlog this week, people. Depends what my fancy takes me. But... Um, my fancy takes me. Is that a, is that a phrase? <laughs> it is now, people. Whatever my fancy takes me. Um, so we have a bunch of stuff to talk about. We're going to kick off with The Last of Us Part 2. New gameplay trailers, people. And also with talkovers from uh, Neil Druckmann and another gentleman whose name I'm forgetting. I apologise to you, sir. And uh, the designers of the games. And, uh, and, uh, and a lady as well, actually. And I think, I'm forgetting those two people's names, Neil Druckmann's always the one that, that sticks with us, but they they are directors and designers, I believe, that are joining in his little discussion of the game. So they're basically talking, they're doing a little bit of spraff about, you know, this is the new stuff that we've added to the game and, and the, the deeper elements and all this sort of stuff. And then you get clips in between all of that of, of the gameplay that they're talking about. So what I'll probably have done is behind me, I'll, I'm, I'm, I don't see much point in leaving in their bits of talking behind me, but I can do, I suppose. I'm not sure what the legal side impact is of me editing these things. I tend to, when I have stuff like that, I tend to chop out the talking bits and just put the images behind me. I think that's fine. I don't think I'm doing any wrong there. And sometimes in doing that, it gets copyrighted anyway, irrelevant of what I do. It did with the last vlog. I've, I've, I've put a thing in, like a, a dispute in, just saying it's for review purposes, because I don't even put the sound on. It's like, you know... I mean, the irony is that last week's vlog, I talked over the Ghost of Tsushima full video with all the music, all the sound, talked over it with you guys. And it wasn't that that got copyrighted. It was a piece of image that was silent behind me when I was talking about the Xbox, uh, yeah, the Xbox event about the gameplay stuff. It was that. It was the silent images behind me that, that there was a small snippet of that, which wasn't even a game that was I interested in to be there. <laughs> that, that copyrighted itself for the image. I mean, it's just nuts. It's absolutely nuts. So anyway, it will be up behind me. So we're going to talk about The Last of Us. We're going to talk about some rumours that have hit about Sony and the PS5 possible launch moments. Or at least games coming along that they're going to show off. And we're going to talk about... What else do they have on me? list, people. I have it all written down. Don't, don't you worry. We won't be getting any embarrassing pause moments where Steve doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> like now. <laughs> We're talking about, uh, yes, we've got, uh, yes, well, we've got another, we've got the Silent Hill rumours re rearing their heads again, people, and we have, uh, well, I'm going to chat a bit about Final Fantasy VII Remake because I have been, well, about what I've been playing and what I'm, I'm, I'm now doing and what I've been doing all week. 
and we're going to talk about what I'm going to be doing next because of what I've been doing all week. And I think that's pretty much all of it. All right, so to recap, we are going to kick off with chatting about The Last of Us new gameplay footage and I'll, uh, I'll chat about all the things I've picked up on that. We're then going to talk about Sony possible launch of the gaming that they're going to show off and how important it is the way they're going to show it off as well a little bit because they're kind of being very true about everything about the way they want to reveal the gameplay footage on the ps5 and possible of the rumors on silent hill coming to the ps5 that could be a cross-platform thing but anyway we shall chat a little bit about it and then we're going to talk about the well what i've been doing gameplay wise which you all kind of know about anyway but i'll tell you how that all finished up and what i'm going to be doing next because of what i was playing previous to all of that so let's crack in shall we to the last of us part two gameplay footage that was released this week they seem to be drip feeding us people drip feeding us little bits at a time now with the last of us part two because it is so close it's the 19th of june i think off the top of my head so it's under a month now it's under a month till that game goes now in the last vlog I was quite honest about the fact that I think that I'm probably, well, I was I was last week more stoked for Ghost of Tsushima because of the fact that the Ghost of Tsushima trailer had just come out. It really gave me a buzz. The second time I watched it with you guys with the headphones on and the music and the, I mean, I got proper goosebumps when I was watching that. The Last of Us Part 2 just, very small recap for anyone that didn't watch last week's vlog. I'm I'm not concerned about the game at all. The the gameplay looks extraordinary. The acting looks extraordinary. Music, everything looks extraordinary. I'm just only I'm I'm only concerned about where the story is going. And I'm I can't I I'm kind of I need to I need to rein myself in a bit because I'm try I'm judging a game based on what I think the story is about. But I'm only basing it on what Neil Druckmann has been saying and and everything he's been saying has been saying it's a revenge story. It's a a story of hate and revenge. And it's like, well, is that story going to give me uh, any kind of progress in the overarch story, which is the infection of that world and the fact that Ellie is infected? And yet, also in the clips... There are a couple of things that make me think that Ellie's not infected anymore. And I know that sounds stupid, but there's a clip where she has to wear a face mask uh, or a gas mask to stop the spores getting to her. And I'm thinking, well, why? Because she doesn't need to do that in the original because she's immune. Like she's the only person that's immune. And then there's another scene that got me curious about it. I'm forgetting what it was now. And... Oh, it'll come back to me. But there's a couple of scenes where I thought, well, that she wouldn't need to do that. Oh, yeah, there's a scene where she gets attacked by uh, an infected. And the girl that she's with, sorry, I'm forgetting the character's name, but the girl that she's having the relationship with in the clips and stuff, she picks her up from the scene and she says, you're all right, you bit, or something like that. And she says, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And she's checking herself. And it's like, well, why do you need to worry about being bit when you're already infected? Like, So the whole Ellie thing... Uh, is looking a little bit like what's going on. And I'm I'm not sure what they've done there. And I really, really hope that they haven't just gone, oh, she grew out of it. Because that's like, what are you on about? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I suppose you could go down the route of like the, the infection mutated. So it's not the same infection she's got anymore. That's possible, I suppose. I mean, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into it. But the whole crux of the first story was that she was the only person that had been found to be immune by being bitten. So I I really wanted that to develop somehow in the next one. You know, the way that the whole ending of that last one worked out with the way that Joel effectively lied to her at the end to protect her in a loving way, you know, but he did lie to her. And she, I think she, that, that scene, I think she feels that. I think she feels that, it doesn't matter what I say to him. He's not going to let me. He's 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 going to tell me that he's going to tell me that lie because he wants to protect me. I think she knew that. I think I think in a deep down she knows it. But there has to be some kind of repercussion to that. You assume, you know, it's going to come out of the woodwork. You would think. But anyway, I just hope that that's not all just well, for want of a better phrase, left behind. <laughs> 
<laughs> I wasn't going for the pun there on the, the DLC. But yeah, I hope that isn't all left behind and we just move on to this new hate story because I, ha- I really want a lot of that to drag forward. Like, I want that. I just I don't want to just go into a story where we, we know that her and Joel are close, but we'll forget everything that happened. Because I, I, I feel a little bit robbed of the previous story, you know. But, you know, I do have a lot of faith in Neil Druckmann, though. In generally speaking, I do. I wasn't overly impressed with Uncharted 4. Great looking game, but there was far too much of The Last of Us influence in it. And it wasn't it wasn't the ride that I got with the other three Uncharted games. And I really, there is a huge part. I mean, I want greatest love and respect to Neil Druckmann. I love the guy. But I, I, I there's a huge part of me that wishes Amy Hennig had, had made that Uncharted 4. Because it would have been a very different game. And it would have been the sort of Uncharted game that we got in 3 without any shadow of a doubt. Um, it became, I don't know, it became something else Uncharted 4. I mean, there's some fun bits in it, but the story with the shoehorning in a character that there's no way we would have gone through three games of not hearing about Nathan Drake having a brother and then suddenly there's a brother. It was like shoehorning in this character for a story um, that wasn't needed, in my opinion. Um... Uh, and and it was it was too big it was too vast it, it needed to really rein itself in all of these talk options all of these you know i understand you don't want to make the same game over and over again but there are little things you can do to tweak and make something better without making it something completely different when you know that the fans have adored the last two that you've done you don't want to mess with the the concepts too much but you know and that's what concerns me a little bit about on the the last of us part 2 it, the the fact that the last outing wasn't for me up to the level of experience that I wanted it to be or story that I wanted it to be, so um, that's my my big concerns on it. So that's why that's why Ghost of Tsushima's got me a little bit more excited to to come back round to the beginning of this conversation because I feel like it's well there's no expectation there and everything I'm seeing is just better and better as we get fed more. And it just looks incredible. And that's what a month after the, the Last of Us Part 2 comes out. I'm not, there's no way I'm not going to get the Last of Us Part 2 at launch, people, because I need to, I need to, I need to, <laughs> you know, for all my moaning, still going to be a great game. But I just hope the story fulfills me in a way that I want it to. You know what I mean? It's like, anyway, we're going to see. We're going to find out. That all said, after watching the new gameplay and and them chatting about the stuff they've added to the world and the way that Ellie plays, the way that and then the bits of acting I see from, um, oh god, why do I always forget her name? I I, I always remember her Twitter handle, which is at Vulcan Salute, and then forget. Her. <laughs> anyway <laughs> and the acting from her is just you know the little scenes the little facial expressions the just i just adore that character it's so good and i don't nobody could have portrayed that character the way that she portrayed that character the the little touches she puts into it and the attitude the i mean it's just great you know i mean i can't wait i mean the piece of the last last of us game that we play well the existing last of us game that we've played the little bit that you get to play as Ellie is brilliant. It's so much fun. It's so good. so And it's brilliant playing as her. So I, I absolutely wanted this game to be a, a, as Ellie, the playable character. So I'm really looking forward to that in, in and itself. So well, anyway, I'm, I'm now mega... I am still... Every time... I, with this gameplay footage, I'm more stoked again. Even though I know the story concepts and stuff. When I see... When I see the gameplay footage and the way that the world has opened up a bit and the crafting and the level design and the the character's abilities have, 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 have improved. It's all starting to feel like I really want to get my hands on it. So I think we're on a level playing field really at the minute. <laughs> and also, I think because, and we'll talk about it in a bit obviously, that because I've been playing Final Fantasy VII, which is very linear, um, I kind of want a more linear experience, I think. I didn't really want The Last of Us to open up into a massive open world. I want the story to be somewhat contained. I know they've opened up the game somewhat in the, the level areas are slightly bigger, but it is still a linear experience. So I think that kind of experience in the end might win over on something like Ghost of Tsushima, which may just end up being another world that I wander about in getting bored. I hope not. Uh, I hope there's enough interest in that world to to keep me focused and interested. But I am finding 
the open world experiences are becoming a little bit like I'm, I'm kind of stoked for the first five to ten hours and then I just feel like I'm wandering around, you know, <laughs> like what am I doing, where am I going to be going, do I really, is this fun, like just jumping from, you know, make that area secure, make that area secure, make that area secure, it's like, and again, and I'll say it and I'll keep saying it, The Witcher 3 was by far the one that has, 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 given us the best open world experience because it put inside that world mega interesting storylines both in side quest and main quest that you wanted to go and do it also gave you the best experience points for doing the side quests and story quests not running around killing enemies for 50 million hours so the whole experience was you can go and wander about and find the good armors and stuff if you want. It's really interesting because they're great armors and great weapons and blah, blah, blah. And fighting the enemies is fun. But for the full in experience, stick to the story and side quests. Keep yourself interested. They give you something to think about. They never leave you wandering around aimlessly. There's always something to do. And and of interest. You know, and it always takes you to an interesting place and an interesting character or set of characters to meet. That is the kind of game that I want to be in an open world for. I don't want to be in an open world that is like Assassin's Creed, which is you're jumping from tower point to tower point to open up a new area that I can see what's in it and then go to all the bits that are in it, which aren't really a surprise. And it's like, it's become so generic. And I know that people go on about Spider-Man being amazing, but Spider-Man had, for me, and it's the reason I haven't finished it, was the same thing. Like I could, I, I suppose I could just play this, the campaign but it's the, I don't know, the OCD in me just is like, I have to go and release all those radio towers and I have to go and, you know. So you just end up swinging around the map doing the same stuff over and over. Also, you know, give Spidey the ability to crouch down on the ground people. You know what I mean? <laughs> he can crouch down on a bloody bar that's about that wide, but you can't crouch down on the floor. You've got to walk around like this, like everyone can see you. Fucking hell. Look, seriously, Spider-Man 2, can we crouch down on the floor, please, so we can sneak around a vehicle or something? <laughs> What's that all about? Oh, dear. Anyway, shall we crack into the the bits of The, the Last of Us Part 2 that I was uh, going to ramble on about, that I've just spent the last, God knows, 15 minutes rambling on about other things. So let's crack in. I'll put the... I will... I'll have edited... I'll probably have edited it behind me uh, to show you, depending on how long I ramble on for... Uh, if the video with them talking in it, it just holds some interest behind me while we're talking for the same length of time, then I might leave the whole thing in together. But anyway, one way or the other, you'll see what I'm talking about. So not necessarily in the right order at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a bit like Morgan and Wise, isn't it? You know, uh, I was playing all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. Uh so, yeah, so the, the whole video starts off with her crawling under a vehicle, I think, uh, under a, under concrete or something, I think it is, actually. Might be a vehicle, but anyway. Uh, so the, the first thing they start talking about is the, her ability to manoeuvre around the world more freely, give her more options, give her more, you know. But by the same token, they are giving the enemies the same freedoms to be able to look in those places, to be able to, you know, drag you out of those places if they catch you. So... One of the biggest things you notice straight away is that they've put crawling into the game. Now, in the old one, we could we could crouch and sneak around that way, but there was no crawling. So what they've done effectively is make the world an up and down environment as well as a, a left and right environment. There was a very, very limited jump ability, if you could even call it that in the first one. There were certain places you could force Joel to just heavily leap over like a two well not even that like a two centimeter distance <laughs> and it was only to get from you know from top of one car to another it wasn't really in the battles or the fights or the sneaking around areas it was really just to progress from that end to that end so it's nice to see them building in a more a more what's the word i'm looking for people three-dimensional world i guess um yeah, we'll call it that. But the ability to go lower or higher. Um, so they've added not just the crawling, but a really effective jumping. Um, so you can now, I'm going to limp, I, I, I wrote these down as crawling, hiding in grass, uh, not visible in grass, uh, not invisible in grass. You are at a further distance and stuff like that. So I'll kind of loop it all together and just talk about those particular things. So effectively what this all boils down to is they know that from... The original one, Joel was a, a bigger, stronger, more powerful character 
Um, obviously, they were working with what they had at the time, but his character was very full on or sneak around. There was no real depth to going up or down or whatever for fighting. Um, but with Ellie, when they look at her character, she's she's smaller, she's lighter, she's more agile. So they want to give her a completely different play style as much as they can to how you were playing as Joel. So what they're talking about in this video is the agility and the ability for her to move around those 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 environments for each level in order for her to benefit as best she can from surprising or from both, you know, or, or having extra agility in a fight and that sort of thing. So they're, they're showing off like she, she can sprint and slide into the grass and hide down, but enemies from a distance will be like, oh, we saw her going into the grass, but we don't know where she is. So they'll start searching the grassy areas. And if they get closer to you, they will see you. It's not like Assassin's Creed where they won't see you and you just... <laughs> you're literally there and you just stab them in the throat or something they will see you as they get closer it's the same with vehicles they have the ability to look under them or any cra or any crawl space so you constantly got to be aware of of what they're aware of so they've given you the ability to be more diverse but they've also given the enemies abilities to be more watchful and, and more able to to see where you are by them being clever more clever at seeing other areas where you could be technically speaking so it's really interesting that they've done that. They've also, they've built in, and they also showed off her ability to, to go. Uh, so she effectively, they've built in a proper jump button, right? So you've now got crawl, squat, or crouch, stand, jump is the other one they've given us. So they've built in a proper jump button, which means Ellie can jump on top of pretty much anything that's around her that's jump at a height that is jumpable. Uh, jumpable, the word, people? <laughs> think so it's now uh, so they show off her climbing up onto a vehicle jumping on another vehicle jumping up on her so you have the ability now to take the fight to another level because you can try and maybe sneak up from a height get a, a lay of the land see where everybody is a bit better than you would if you had to be stuck behind a wall you know crouch down or whatever uh, I, i've not seen and I think I have. I was going to say, I'm not sure if the see-through walls thing, the, the sensibility is there. I don't remember seeing it in this clip, but I think maybe the clip before we might have seen it. I think she's got that. I think it might be built in. But so that ability to then, you know, take it to any level of where you want to gain your advantage, whether it be lowest you can be or highest you can be, they've given us all of that. And they've also, if you're going into the combat, They've really mixed that up a bit because with Ellie being more agile, they've given her a dodge button. So, well, not her, <laughs> us a dodge button, which means that in any given situation, if somebody goes for you, you've got the ability to try and jump out, try and dodge out the way. And it's more of a, a, a it is literally a, 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 a pushback or a side, whatever. It's like that. It's not like rolling on the floor or, you know, it is literally like, you know, just shift out the way kind of stuff. Which gives you ability, because they do say, like, sometimes it's better just to run away. You're never going to be able to take them all on. So if you get caught, you can try and dodge out and just sprint for it, get to a hidden area or whatever. So that, I really like that, because there's nothing worse than, like, oh, I'm caught and now I'm just fucked, because everyone in the world can see where I am and I have no ability to, you know, if, if like, it's like a zombie game, isn't it? Like, they grab you and then you're stuck in this cutscene of them, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm really pleased that that's in there. That excites me a little bit because it gives you a bit of freedom when it comes to to that that fight mechanic where it's like, right, I've got the ability to move here. Like, I'm not just stuck like shooting or trying to awkwardly turn. And um, yeah, I really like that. I've got. I'm really stoked for that. And they've also mixed up the. I mean, if you look at the way that they are doing the. The weapons, the crafting has all been expanded. I'm not sure how... It doesn't seem to specify like how many weapons or stuff are in it or whether it's the same kind that we had before or, you know, there seems to be... You see a rifle and stuff like that, but what they have talked about is what they've done with Ellie, you have to, you have to really pick and choose as to what you're going to level up when it comes to your weapons and abilities. And they've made it so that you, you've really got to pick a play style because you can't really dabble too far in too many places because you can't possibly level them all up so you've got to pick and choose like 
you kind of have to decide early on, like, right, where am I going to go with these skill paths and, and weapon paths? Because uh, I'm, I don't want to be half good at everything. I want to be really good at, at this, and that's how I'm going to survive this game. And by doing that with us, they're making us feel more connected to Ellie because this is my Ellie. This is the Ellie I designed, and this is the Ellie that is going to get me through this world. And I really like that. I like the fact they've done that. And to go in hand, hand in hand with that, they've, they've included... There's a lot stayed in there, people. I've not looked at my notes in ages. <laughs> They've also included a deeper searching crafting system by the looks of it. Well, it's definitely searching because they're saying, like, you, you're really going to want to search everywhere in this one. Like, you know, every drawer, every cabinet, because you will find stuff that you can do more with. And they've, they've included two of the things I picked out. They've included you can make a silencer. Uh, you can make bullets of specific types. Uh, sorry, ammo of specific type. So, you know, that in the old, you couldn't do that in the old one. It was kind of, uh, try to remember now, but it certainly wasn't like that anyway. So it, 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 those two examples alone that, that they've given us has shown that they've really thought about the fact that what we pick up becomes a bit more important because you've got more diversity to create different things. In the old one, it got very, very samey because you were picking up the stuff for medkits, the stuff for molotovs, which could be some of the same things. Uh, the, the what were they called? Scrap, which was used for... Uh, I think scrap was used for a multitude of things, wasn't it? I need to play that again, actually, before it comes out, just to refresh my mind on everything. But I think scrap was used for a multitude of things for... I'm sure it was used for all kinds of upgrades and stuff on your weapons, wasn't it? You need a certain kind of scrap and you needed those pliers to be able to take it to another level and stuff like that. But it was, it was great, but it was very limited. So there was only a certain amount of things you could actually pick up and it all became very, very samey. Unlike Days Gone, which is an open world similar animal. Uh, every time I thought that Days Gone was kind of like, well, that's like me picked up everything there is to pick up in this world. That wasn't true because every time I unlocked a new ability to make a new melee weapon or whatever, suddenly more things became available to pick up and make items for that. So that was really cool and I loved that about that game. It didn't just say, well, that's it now, you've picked up everything that is of interest to make something. It became, oh, here's some more items you can pick up that you recognize that are useful for that new item you can now uh, build or use or whatever. So that was really, really cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with what I saw in that gameplay footage. Um, I wouldn't have minded like one of them smiling while they were talking about the game. <laughs> Honest to God, it was like they'd filmed Neil and the other two like at the end of a really hard day's graft, and they were like, "Oh my God, I've really got to do this fucking gameplay thing." Like I'm knackered. <laughs> God bless them. I love you guys. Uh, but you did, you didn't look very happy. <laughs> Mind you, it's not a happy world, is it? I suppose you, you can't, you've you been building a game for the last four or five years. I mean, <laughs> it's not a particularly happy world to be in, right enough. But uh, they just, I don't know, they just looked really down. Uh, I mean, to be fair, it could be to do with the fact that we've all been locked down for like the last two months. But anyway, God bless them. Um, what else? Did I miss anything there, people? Dodge elevation. Yeah, I mean, I touched on level design. The, the levels themselves, they talked about being not open world, but, but more naturally interesting to wander about. In the old one, it was like, here's a couple of places you can go in this area and some doors you can open, um, some houses that have doors you can open, and it's but very linear. There's only certain places you can go and explore, and then you're on, you're just walking through it. This, they're saying they've made that far more interesting. So you could actually, the way they described kind of within that was what you do in that world, you can have an experience that maybe someone else doesn't because of the way you did it and and with Ellie and all that malarkey. So, uh, and the, the areas themselves are far more open and interesting. So you can go more diverse and because it's up and down, you can get up to, you know, different locations on, I don't know. Uh, roofs, balconies, maybe something like that. But it's far more open so far as going through those areas goes. And it, uh, the way they were saying it was, it's not like, it's not like here's a big fight and then here's a bit of a walk and then here's a big fight and here's a bit of a walk. It, it's more interesting than that. 
I mean, I didn't mind that, to be fair. It was fine. It worked well with the, the story-driven narrative and all the rest of it. Um, but it, it will be more interesting to do that. It won't just be a case of that. It will be more interesting to search around these areas and find things and do things and, and pick off enemies in a different way. Um, gathering, we talked about. Gathering items. Can't upgrade everything. Yeah, we talked about that. So I've pretty much covered everything there, guys. I remember nearly all of that off the top of me. I'm going to have a sip of them. Get thirsty already, people. Ooh, flagons up to you all. Oh my goodness me, that was nice. Might have to have another one of them after this is finished, people. So there you are. I mean, through all of that, and watching that a few times, that trailer, it's getting me more stoked again, people. It really is. So my only concern is the narrative at this point. I think the gameplay is going to be absolutely spot on. Uh, but, you, you know, there was actually... I, I moaned last week that there wasn't an awful lot of... Uh, infected gameplay being shown and it was making me think like just constantly walking around like murdering human beings as ellie and it was like that's not really what i want this game to be i don't want her to be an assassin you know what i mean <laughs> i mean that's not who she is is it i mean i know hate drives many people to do many things i suppose but i don't think it turns you into a murdering monster um that will kill like hundreds of people just to you know make a point but anyway we'll see how it goes people so it was nice to see that the infected were were well in that clip. There was plenty of little shots of infected kicking around. So yeah, I'm super stoked for it. Um, I'm, I am going to get it at launch. There's no doubt about it. I was humming and hawing last week because of feeling frustrated about the narrative maybe. But, you know, the closer it gets, the see trailers and clips like that. Um, yeah, super excited people. So let us move on, people. Let us move on. So there's a couple of things. Sony have been, we all know that Sony have been mega quiet when it comes to the launch of the PS5. We, lots of rumours this week about a June 4th Sony event. And there was a mention from the CEO of, of Sony, of, of PlayStation. I think it was the CEO. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the CEO. And he, I think it was a tweet or a, something on the blog. He said, uh, really, really soon you're going to get a, a big hit of PS5 games. So, and the more that the week went on, I've heard very specific stories about the fact that quite a few devs have dropped out of the event. Well, not quite a few, a few. Because Sony are being very specific about the fact that they want only footage that is playing on a PS5. Unlike the Xbox event, that basically wasn't showing them on an Xbox Series X. Some of them, I think there were a few that did, but a lot of them came up with, you'll notice on that video clip, a lot of them came up with, this is what we predict it will look like on an Xbox Series X. And it was like a PC version or something. It wasn't true depiction of, or it wasn't playing on an Xbox Series X. So PlayStation are being, because of the demo they just had and how amazing it looked with the Unreal Engine 5, they are being very specific with people who want to take part in their event that they whatever they're showing has to have been playing on a PlayStation 5. And a few of them have dropped out because of it is the rumor. So I'm really I'm really quite excited about that because, you know, um, to steal a phrase, uh, well, smoke and mirrors, I guess you don't like Watch Dogs. Remember Watch Dogs when we first saw Watch Dogs, the original before the PlayStation 4 launched and they showed that incredible watchdogs footage it looked almost like real people <laughs> and then by the time it hit the ps4 it was like a quarter of what we saw it was like i mean it didn't look anything like it because ubisoft did not show that on the next gen consoles they showed it on a piece a high-end pc and they're sort of renowned for doing that so you know i do believe however i do believe that the uh assassin's creed valhalla was showing on the xbox series x so, you know, I won't take that away from them. Even though it was 30 frames per second. <laughs> dig, dig. <laughs> so, yeah, super excited for that. And and I June the 4th, I don't know where the date's been plucked up from, but I think it certainly seems to have come from some decent sources. So we'll see what happens. There, without any shadow of a doubt, we must be extremely close to PlayStation one way or the other 
really shouting about what they're doing because we can't they can't be waiting any longer i understand that they've still got two massive titles launching they've got the last of us part two on the 19th of june june and then they've got uh i think exactly a month later might not be the 19th but almost exactly a month later in july you've got ghost of tsushima they're massive titles people i mean make, make, make no mistake about it if those were xbox titles phil spencer would be creaming himself i mean they're amazing games i mean they are top tier you won't get higher quality games than that first but i mean that, that you know they, they are and they are from studios that have been going for many a year people they are triple a studios i mean to to have two titles like that coming out at the tail end of a cycle is just insanity it's just brilliant so they don't want to take the emphasis away from those two games and i think that's why they've held off as, and, and delivered the little bits that they have and i think now that they've pushed both of those a little bit more, people know they're still coming. I think, me personally, I think we'll see some form of, by the way, both of these titles are going to look super impressive on the PS5. So, you know, <laughs> I'd be mad not to really. Like, you know, immediately playable on the PS5. I mean, the PS5 is back compat anyway. If you say immediately, and by the way, both of those games will play more uberly by this much on the PS5 and the PS4, so, you know, you might want to buy yourself a PS4, a 5. I think that's a massive sell point for the PS5. So I think it was absolutely the right thing to do for Sony to hold off as long as they could to really push those titles and then maybe drop that in when they do the reveal, maybe June 4th, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I, but we're super close to them revealing at least the, some games that they're, that they're going to show off playing on the PS5 so we can all go, holy shit. And I think we're going to be super impressed with what PlayStation has to, has to offer. I'm only I'm only down on the PlayStation because they've gone with a white and black con. I mean, I really didn't want white anywhere near consoles, but anywho, you know. Um, worst case scenario, I stick it in the closed cabinet bit, and <laughs> it's a bit more less out of the eye. And I'll put the Xbox Series X up in the open bit in my particular thing. And I think a white controller is going to get quite dirty quite quickly, but. We will see what happens. <clears throat> Hopefully, I mean, a lot. I'm pretty sure at launch last time we were able to buy a blue controller or a black controller. You couldn't buy the blue controller with the station, but you could buy it as a second. So if they have an option of a black, an all black controller or something a bit more subtle than black and white for a controller, I may well go for that as a second controller because I always get two anyway. Um, but yeah, anyway, super stoked. It looks like with this close people to PlayStation really going for it. They, they can't not now. It's getting very, very close people. On with uh, Staying on the Sony subject, there's been rumours for ages that the, the Silent Hills franchise is coming back. And there's been loads of rumours about the fact that Sony were buying up the franchise so that Kojima could make the Silent Hills game that he wanted to make and all that malarkey. Uh, now, that seemed to get solidified some point through the week with other rumours. And then today, I heard more rumour about the fact that that's absolutely not true. There is a Silent Hill game coming, um, but it's uh, on PS5, but it's not Kojima. It is from Konami. So, And it's heavily in development, it's playable and blah. I mean, this could all be bollocks, people, but that's what I've been hearing today so that has reared its head again and there can't be this many rumors about a title without some of it being true i mean it just can't and the rumors that i heard today were from a a source that is quite well renowned for getting stuff right it does a lot of investigating and that sort of thing um by the way if you see weird shadows today it's because <laughs> i keep saying that my, the lighting on me is awful because of the sun outside it keeps lighting up going dark blah so i've actually put a little light here and it keeps blinding me every time i look at it but it's it's pointing up at me so hopefully the lighting on me is a bit better than it's been it's been up and down up and down the last number of, well the last number of years people when the weather's like this so i'm hoping let me know if that's a bit better um not that anyone wants to see more of me but <laughs> you'd be thankful for the footage behind me when i go little at the top Anyway, I mean, I'm, I've am i never been... Like, I don't think I've ever played the Silent Hills franchise properly, to be honest with you. I just... It's a massive thing. I love, this, I love the movie that came out about it. I remember playing a little bit of it way back in the day on the PS1 or whatever. But it, you know... It was re-released on PS3 HD, wasn't it? I mean, I could go back and play it. But it's never really been something I wanted to delve into. I'm not a huge fan of horror that I can't react in some way. 
you know, I can I can do resi because I get a gun and I get, you know, some way of protecting myself. I'm not, as far as I remember, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but Silent Hill seemed to be very much wander about with not many options to, you know, almost like another hide and seek type horror game like Outlast or whatever, but in third person. So I don't know that it's really for me. I mean, I did finish Outlast which I'm pretty proud of because <laughs> I can only really play it like an hour at a time. I was like, oh, it freaked me out so much. It was a really good game, that. I've never played the second one, but it was it was, uh, it was was really, really good. But it was intense, though. I mean, I, I can only take so much of that type of game. Um, so anyway, it'll be exciting to see what they've done with the franchise if we do get it. And those people who love the Silent Hills franchise will be pleased to know that it looks like something's coming for it anyway. And... Finally, oh, finally, we'll talk about what I was doing. I can put that down now because I know what I'm on about. I keep getting blinded every time I turn around to get me drink, people, because it's one of those tiny little, uh, you can't even change the bulb in them. It's like you clip it onto a bookcase or something for helping you get a little spotlight in your book or something. And it's really bright. Um, but the only way it will give me any extra brightness is if it's actually right on me. So I just need to look this way. But every time I look at it once and turn back, everything over here is just a white blob. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to have another sip. So, this week, and for the last number of weeks, has it been two weeks? probably been about two weeks or so since I've put up any sort of Let's Play stuff. I said last week I just needed a bit of a break from it, really. It was becoming a bit of work. And to be honest, I, I, again, I don't know if I kind of teetered off of enjoying the games that I was playing either. I mean, they were all fine. There's nothing wrong with the games. But my mindset at the time was somewhere else. And then Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, my son Aaron Brew, he got that for me for my birthday at the uh, tail end of April, 27th of April. And... I, from the minute I started playing it, I was addicted to it. I have my frustrations with that game. I talked about them last week, but it's a solid, you know, I want to give it a nine people, but it's maybe an 8.5 because of the, because of the frustrations I had with it. It was like, oh. they're very small frustrations, but they're just things I felt like could have made it a, a whole, a more whole experience, you know, bit more freedom. Don't keep slowing me down every time I feel like I'm just getting going and, and little things like that. But when it comes to, and, and more interest, I know that the material that is in it is the material from the original game. But I feel like if you're going to redo something and gonna and you're going to do your own stamp on it, then why not introduce more material? Like, you know, I know you can get stuff from the Intel missions that I didn't quite do, but again... Doing Intel missions is not a fun way to gain anything. Like, for me, I'd rather do, like, there's plenty of areas in that game, well, there's a few areas in that game, where you, you see materia spotted about. It's like, well, I want that, it's a yellow, I can see it from here. Or I want that, it's a blue, I can see it from here. And you figure out a way to get to it, it's a puzzle. I don't want some mundane way, like, doing certain things in battle to gain materia. I, I want an interesting way to get materia. I want to discover it in the land in the world because i did because i thought about the where i was going or secret places i could go or i spoke to everybody and somebody told me there was this new place and because i spoke to them i can now see that new place and get in. this sort of stuff you know what i mean like i don't want it to be oh you just gotta rattle through this list of jobs from this young specky scout that you've just found i mean it's like that's not interesting and yet i'll pick up about 20 fecking poison materia which I'm never going to use. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, oh, fuck, it's another poison. <laughs> so there was little things like that. But these are these are small gripes. It's an incredible game, you know. So it's like, it's an 8.5 instead of a 9. That's basically all I'm saying. Um, but that game could easily have been a 10. Easily. With just smoothing over some of these things I'm talking about. For me. You know, just my just my humble opinion, people. But it's an incredible game, and it's the first game that's kept me hooked at that level for a really long time. Well, in fact, the last one was probably War in the North, which is the PS3 game that I did the Let's Play on. I mean, I was addicted to that. So since that, the last thing that's got me this hooked, and I've not had to push myself to play it, has been Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, and it's funny, because after finishing it, and I was really chuffed. It's really tough fights in that game. You know, there's a. It's interesting because the last three trophies that are finish act 
but is it 60, 17, 18 or 18, 92? I can't remember. But the last the last three story trophies for finishing the last three chapters are rare <laughs> trophies, whereas all the ones before it are common. So it shows you, I think, that some people have struggled to tell, to finish the game off. Because the boss fights are tough. Like You've really got to think about it. You've really got to set your team up right. Um, I mean, I'm pretty proud, actually, that I got through the game. And I think I only died... This is on normal, mind, not on hard. But I only died a couple of times in boss fights. Like, I pushed through most boss fights just sometimes, but I pushed through them um, pretty well. Uh, I'd be very interested. I'm not going to go for a platinum or anything at the minute, but you, you, to play, you need to play through in hard mode, which basically says you, you're not allowed to use items and you don't get MP and HP back when you rest at the benches. So that's... That, uh, sorry, no, you get HP back, but you don't get MP back. And the magic points are vital. But you, you've then got to start thinking about using material that doesn't require HP, uh, MP. Um, you know, like prayer and, and chakra and stuff like that. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of chakra, to be fair. I find it a little bit underwhelming. But prayer, when you level that shit up, that's awesome. So you basically just heal the whole party for, for no MP at all. Uh, I think I got two of those in the game. Anyway. But yeah, incredible. And I, honestly, I didn't. I kept thinking, what am I going to do next? Then I, I've had Final Fantasy fifteen for ages. Put that in, and I gave it a really good go. I, was, I played it for about four hours or so, and I just couldn't get into that. It's the second time I've tried to play it, and it's not to do the battle mechanics are fine. I guess the, the story's fine so far, but I've only seen the beginning of it really. It's just far too open straight away for me. That game. Like, it's not really guiding you really where to go other than just do that mission, do that mission, run here. Right? There's a lot of running around, a lot of driving around, a lot of that. I mean, I just... For me, that's not what I want to be doing. It's far too open. I mean, if you're going to give that ability in a Final Fantasy game, do it on disc three. <laughs> like, you know, like, 13 wasn't that big, to be fair. But 13 finally opens up into something that resembles an open world area. It's not an open world, but it's a big open area to fight in. But it's late on in the game, you know, it's been very linear, it keeps you tight, you know, and fun. 13 still great, I love 13, it's so good. Uh, 13, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to rank them all here, but <clears throat> anyway, I, I, I couldn't do it. And in the end, I'd already downloaded Final Fantasy VII Original from the PlayStation Store because there's a version of it that's been HD and I didn't realise. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful little HD, that. I mean... I know the, the backgrounds have kind of been left as they were, the, the environments, but the little characters being HD'd and stuff, I mean, it's just it's gorgeous to play. And the humour and the style of that game and the, the way that it's developed, I mean, it's just so, so nice. And I couldn't remember much of the, the game, to be fair, and I don't think I'd ever played it to its full, to be fair. Uh, I don't think I'd even got out of um, the main city. But because I kind of got into Final Fantasy when it was 8, Final Fantasy 8 onwards was really where I started playing it. So, um, yeah, so it's been really interesting. I've been playing that all week. <laughs> I've just got hooked on it. So I've been playing that for about two to three hours every night um, before watching a bit of telly, and it's been great. And I've just reached the point where I've left the main city now. There are a few changes, but in the main part, that entire first section, which was only a bit, well, now, now, is it six hours? I think it's taken me about six hours. No, no, maybe not. Somewhere between four and six hours to do that section. And that story and, and, and what I've just done in the original is an entire, you know, 40, 50 hour playthrough that I've just done of of the the remake. So they've done a pretty good job of, of, of opening that up and making it, you know, well, not opening it up, but I don't want to use the term long winded because <laughs> it makes it sound bad. But expanding it, you know, making it a proper game of its own of its own. And, and when you look at that game, it makes sense to make that first part a game of its own because there's a lot they, they expanded on. And there's a lot. The, the core stories are still exactly the same. There's some Easter eggs in there. Um, I'm really pleased that I played the original again to that point. And I've now just reached the open world map, which <laughs> olden day open world's awesome, isn't it? It's just like <laughs> but anyway, but the point being, like, if you look at... And the other thing is, if you play a game like that, like the original... 
you can kind of have like a podcast on in the background and that's what I've been doing. I've been listening to the kind of funny podcasts or um, IGN pods, you know, Beyond or or Unlocked from IGN, stuff like that. What What's Good Games is another one I found with the girls doing it and stuff. Uh, so there's plenty of game po- and I've just been sitting and listening to podcasts while I've been playing that with the sounds like because the, the music in the originals you can only take so much of it at a high level so I just have the game fairly low in volume and uh, you know so they're nice games to play with something else on in the background uh, which feels like you've got a bit of company especially in this environment where we're sort of still in semi-lockdown in this country so it's nice to have that other audio in the background so it's been really pleasant playing that this week but what Final fact, in in playing that, I've been thinking about what I'm going to do after that. I'm definitely going to download... I, I downloaded 7 because it was on offer at the time. I didn't realise that 8 and 9 were also on offer at the time, otherwise I'd have bought them at the same time. So it made me think, because they're both HD'd as well. If you 8 and 9 have both been HD'd. And um, so I'm going to get those when the next sale hits, because I'm not paying, you know, 18 quid for them. I, I got 7 for like... I think it was seven or eight pound. It was it was quite low, but it's gone back up to full price now. I think. I'm going to say full price. I mean eighteen quid or something, not fifty. But um, but I'm going to definitely going to get those two and play them again because it's just it's put me back in the mood for the old style of Final Fantasy, and also I don't know if this is true of all of them. I know it's true for eight, possibly not for nine. Um. They've added an ability to speed the game up. You can put it on times three speed so you can run around really quick. The battles, literally, you can fight a battle in like 10 seconds. Some of the early ones, you can do it in fives. Like, bang, 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 go, done, move on. They've also added a double click on the sticks where you can turn off the auto fight. So you can basically wander around an area without any fights triggering. If you double click it, a little symbol comes up saying you've locked out fighting. So if you just want to look around to see where the hell you're meant to be going, you can just lock it find out and then turn it back on when you want to do some fighting which is great um i wish they'd do that with 10 to some degree because uh, i'd love to play 10 i got found frustrating because i was trying to do little things and just get a fight every two bloody seconds so they've made it really joyful to play again because when you just want to figure stuff out you can just turn the fighting off for a minute um so yeah so i i am definitely going to get the other two and play those again it's really put me back in the mood for that style of final fantasy game i've still got 13 because i did a bit of 13 on the channel so i've still got that to go back to on the xbox one x because that's not available on the ps4 um and it was it was done on the back compat for the xbox one x oh, that whole trilogy was i think um yeah 13 13 2 and, and lightning returns i think they were all they were all done on the back and pat and with 4k cutscenes as well it's really really impressive on the on the x looks gorgeous um you can check that out on the channel the videos are still there if you want to see them i did a, i think i did three or four of them um but i was really enjoying it it was really really good i think i stopped because they kept getting copyrighted and then interestingly i might have said this in a previous vlog but interestingly last in within the last month those copyrights were freed up and it was like a year after i'd <laughs> It must have been because Final Fantasy VII Remake kicked in. But um, anyway, that all triggered me to think, well, what new game can I play? You know, because I could play those games alongside a proper a proper new one. And anyway, it dawned on me that I had never played. My son kept telling me for years and years and years, he's been telling me you should play um, Kingdom Hearts. And I think the reason I never got into it was because of the battle system. Because I loved the Final Fantasy battle systems back then, I was like, man, I'm not keen. But he's he's telling me that the the, the closest battle system to Final Fantasy VII Remake is... Because it's basically a takeoff of the Kingdom Hearts battle system. Not exactly, but similar. So anyway, and that got me thinking, well, actually, I quite, I quite fancy being in a happy world like kingdom hearts you know that sort of disney disney fied final fantasy type thing and i've never played them i've literally i've probably seen just game just trailer footage is probably all i've seen of those games so and i think i saw aaron playing it way back in the day when i went to visit him at his mum's like ages i mean talking when he was little um and that's all i've ever seen of it so you know, I'm in the end. I went, I went onto the online store on PlayStation, and they were the story so far, which is all of the the Kingdom Hearts games up until th- not including three, but up to three. It was still like forty or fifty pound, and three was fifty pound. I was like, I'm not paying fifty quid for a bloody 
you know, I mean, I could have done without three, to be fair, because I'm going to play them in order anyway. Anyway, I thought, well, I don't buy games digitally normally anyway, but... Um, so, yesterday, yes, yeah, it was, it was yesterday, I went on to Shop 2, searched for it, and they had brought uh, both of them down. The story so far and three were both down at eighteen ninety five. I was like, having that. And then when I tried to buy them... I could only get one of them because the three had sold out. Uh, no, the story so far has sold out, but three was still eighteen ninety five, something like that. And I thought, well, I could buy that one and then look somewhere else. But before I did, I jumped over to the game collection, and the game collection had. Uh, I'm going to get it the wrong way around, but they had it was one copy left, <laughs> and I think it was the story so far. I'm going to get it the wrong way around. But anyway, one of them was 14.95 and the other one was 18.95. So I basically sell myself a five, saved myself a fiver by them that one not being available on shop 2 because I would probably just have bought it and not looked otherwise. So that was pretty cool. So for 14.85 plus 18.95 I ordered the both the two and they're on the way. And I still had birthday money sitting there that I hadn't used yet. So that was a nice little result. So I've just got, you know, god knows how much gameplay for uh, the less than a full price game when it comes out so I'm really chuffed with that so they are on their way and that's going to be my next big push to play um, I'm still not in the zone where I want to do let's plays yet so I'm hoping you guys are still looking forward to little vlogs that I do I may do a vlog on a Sunday I'll see if anything crops up over the weekend that I think is worth talking about or even if I'm just chilling with a flag and I might just give you a little chin wag on Sunday we'll see how the day pans out um and there you are, people. So that's my world. That's what I've been hearing this week. It's what I've been playing this week. And it's what I'll be playing in the coming weeks, people. <laughs> well, I hope that's been of some interest to somebody out there. You know. If not, I'll have been talking to me. It's good therapy, you see, talking into a camera anyway. you know. If you want to save yourself like $400 an hour or something for people that go to shrinks in America or... <laughs> just get a camcorder, people. You, know. you can get a cheap one for 100 quid and just chat into it make yourself feel better you know <laughs> you can play it back to yourself each week and say oh, am i still feeling the same way or anyway but it does it feels a bit like therapy when you're talking into these things getting everything off your chat well i, I don't want, i don't want to talk about things that are really you know <laughs> we'll stick to gaming people i'm not going to turn them into some sort of you know <laughs> what's that all about i was breastfeeding till i was 10 <laughs> i i wasn't by the way <laughs> Before anyone mentions it. Well, flag is up to you all. I'm going to stop talking now because I'm talking gibberish. Good grief, money on me first beer. Right, there you are, people. That is all I have for you. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in this vlog of mine. And I shall see you all in the next one, folks. Take it easy, guys. Bye.